did a show where we share the stories of the many who intersect with our healthcare system but are rarely heard from. My name is Kevin Poe, founder and editor of Kevin MD. Rate and review the show at kevinmd.com slash rate. Subscribe at kevinmd.com slash follow. Today in the show, we have Dustin Grinnell. He is a writer and he's the author of the book, The Empathy Academy. Dustin, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. So we'll talk about your book in a little bit, but first off, can you just share your story and journey to where you are today? Yeah, of course. So I am a Boston-based writer. I write uh, nonfiction and in fiction. Uh, in nonfiction, I write uh, personal essays and narrative journalism. In fiction, I write short stories and in novels. I've written three novels now, The Genius Dilemma, Without Limits, and my, my new book, The Empathy Academy. And I've written a dozen or so short stories, and some of those have been published. So tell me about the intersection between medicine and the stories that you write. Yeah, so my background is a bit unique for a writer of fiction. I have a bachelor's in psychobiology. I was also a pre-med major. And then I also went to graduate school to get a master's degree in physiology at Penn State. And so that represents a lifelong fascination I've had with science and medicine and, and technology. And so, it, you know, I grew up reading books just like that, too. One of my idols was Michael Crichton, who I'm sure you know was, you know, a Harvard-trained medical doctor who then started medical thrillers that led him out to California and, you know, kept his career going as a writer of technology thrillers. So I grew up on those. I grew up on reading cautionary tales about technological advances, whether it was Kurt Vonnegut or Ray Bradbury in his book uh, for Fahrenheit 451 or like the the book uh, 1984 by Orwell. So it was really, it's always been really natural for me to base fictional stories in science and in medicine and to then kind of explore the ethical complexities of uh, those fictional technologies or fictional like medical or scientific contexts. So tell me the process of incorporating medicine and, and technology, some ethical dilemmas into your stories. Do you start with specific medical advances and dilemmas first and then base a story around that? Or do you start with a story first and incorporate these dilemmas and, and medical advances and technology into the story. So, so tell me about the process of how you incorporate medicine into your stories. Yeah. So, um, I wouldn't call myself a literary writer by any stretch of the imagination. I'm sort of a high concept idea driven commercial writer. So much like Michael Crichton's work, my stories are really more about the ideas, mm -hmm. uh, and the, the plot and the character development are kind of secondary to those quote unquote big ideas, if you will. So what I do is, you know, I write speculative fiction in the subgenre of speculative uh, fiction is like sci-fi or fantasy. Mm -hmm. So any speculative fiction writer is always asking that like what if question. So I think all of my stories start from like a what if, right? What if this happened? Mm -hmm. What if the technology existed? And if so, you know, how would humans deal with it and how would it affect our society? And so I'm often, you know, dealing with this big what if question, much like, like every Black Mirror episode mm -hmm. starts, you know, what if we could remember everything? Mm. Uh, you know, what if, what if there were, you know, what if we could bring back the dead mm -hmm. um, through like an Android and like replace the consciousness of a loved one into uh, a robot. What would that do to society, uh, to our relationships? You know, what are the interpersonal ramifications of technology? So, you know, in my first book, I was dealing with the idea of smart drugs. You know, what if we exponentially increased our intelligence and what would be the ethical implications of that? The second book without limits is using nanotechnology to like vastly increase our ability to kind of it, to, to increase our biological capacity mm -hmm. in, in the physical sense. And then my, my third book, The Empathy Academy, I've really been over the years drawn to or like darkly fascinated by scandals and scams and cons. And particularly like, I think it started with, you know, Lance Armstrong's, mm -hmm. his scandal 
and and it's and then it kind of went to the 2008 financial crisis and the the unethical behavior that led to that and Bernie Madoff scandal and and then and then most recently Elizabeth Holmes sort of fraudulent blood testing technology in her company Theranos and uh, you know I asked this kind of what if question you know what if we could what if we could identify future wrongdoing before it happened what if we saw it coming and what if it was related to one's genes a complex cluster of genes that drive certain behavior and so you know the the book really revolves around this ability to predict future behavior you know what is the what is the relationship between how our genes affect who we are and what our behavior is versus our environment nature versus nurture discussion so the book kind of tries to dramatize that nature versus nurture discussion before starting off and writing a story, a speculative fiction story. How much research do you do before going about and writing the story? A pretty significant amount. I, I would say what I, if I get captured by an idea, I'll start to read around it. And I'll, you know, for example, with the Empathy Academy, I, I needed to really, because I was so captured by the idea of, you know, scandals and, you know, why did Bernie Madoff do what he did? Mm -hmm. Elizabeth Holmes scandal happened. I really did a lot of research around the kind of science of ethics and morality. Mm -hmm. So why do otherwise good, well-intentioned people cross ethical and moral lines, right? So a lot of the research was around, you know, what are those like cognitive biases we have that get us into trouble? Mm -hmm. What are the psychological and organizational pressures that force us into, you know, force make us kind of bend the rules, break the rules? And, and so I really dove into all that research and I think there's, there's always the question, like, do you get caught in research and you're stuck there and you don't mm -hmm. do, do any writing? And that, that's a real possibility. So for me, I always do enough to get the story started. And then as I'm writing, I'm continually reading new books, uh, talking to new people, seeing documentary, reading the literature that inform the story. So you kind of have to be open as you're composing and you even have to be open to new research as you're, as you're even in the editing phase, like mm -hmm. your, your later drafts, the empathy Academy uses CRISPR technology to kind of change the genes of, of adolescence in order to kind of turn on these like fictional empathy genes. And I had started outlining the book writing the book before CRISPR really even came on the scene. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know how I was going to quote unquote, like change people's genes effectively in fiction, because my fiction is very hyper realistic. You know, I need, I need to actually do what Michael Crichton did in Jurassic Park. Like he substantiated the, you know, the possibility of bringing old dinosaurs gen genes to life. So I needed to do that too. So when CRISPR came on, I knew immediately I had something to hang my hat on. So just always being open to, to new developments that, that can, can help, help drive your story. We're talking to Dustin Grinnell. He's a writer and his latest book is called The Empathy Academy. So Dustin, you've been talking about your latest book during this conversation. What are some of the other key messages that you want readers to come away with after reading it? I think that one of the the things that is important that i learned through writing the book is that i think we should all be aware of the psychological and organizational forces that are at play in like our our you know in our work in our personal lives and be kind of aware that you know we're all we're all not too far away from crossing moral lines if, if given the right forces at play. Like I said, the, the book was really inspired by the Bernie Madoff mm -hmm. scandal. And for me, I was really like, you know, how does someone like him engineer, you know, he started off as this kind of master of the universe, very well respected uh, by his family and by his by uh, people in his industry. And then he, he sort of just started cooking the books, right? Mm -hmm. And why did that happen? You know, and, you know, I think educating ourselves about the, the, the kind of science of ethics is very helpful for us to, 
not fall into similar traps. In the case of Madoff, I think his behavior can be partially explained by what's called loss aversion. And I encourage people to go to a website called Ethics Unwrapped. And uh, it's a really good place to learn more about the science of morality and ethics. And loss aversion is this idea that we dislike losses about twice as much as we enjoy gains. Mm. And really what that means is that we'll take much greater risks in order to avoid loss than we would to, to actually get something. So in the case of Madoff, it may very well have been that he, when the, you know, the economy turned and his business was in dire straits, he had trouble just admitting failure and just saying, you know, potentially I'm going to have to suffer major losses here. And instead he started taking major risks to avoid loss you know, through the process of loss aversion. And I think that's probably where he started fudging numbers and, and cooking the books and creating a massive operation to, you know, to, to shore up his, his losses. And then it just became a runaway train. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I hesitate to call anyone quote unquote evil because I think there's just, it's just much more complicated than, than, than we know. Sometimes there are unconscious and conscious things happening. There are very strong organizational and psychological forces at play. And I think just educating ourselves uh, about those can help us all, you know, color in between the lines, so to speak. And my final question, what are some of your take home messages that you want to leave with the Kevin MD audience? One of the reasons why I'm, it's such a pleasure to come on your show is I enjoy writing by physicians and health providers and books like When Breath uh, Becomes Air, books by Atul Gurwanda, a uh, book like When you know, Mountains Beyond Mountains about Paul Farmer. These books are really uh, compelling to me. And I, I would just love to, to read more. And, you know, if your audience is interested in, in writing about their personal experiences as clinicians in memoir or fictionalizing it, I would, I would love to read it. And I have, you know, an appetite for that type of writing. And I think that, yeah, I would, I, I just want to in, inspire people to, to tell their stories because, you know, you have an audience here at least. Dustin, thank you so much for sharing your time and insight. And thanks again for being on the show. Thank you.